Hey everyone, welcome to the video. This one we are going over the Monday Night Football Showdown slate, the Rams versus the Ravens. Before we continue though, if you guys can leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, really appreciate it. Getting close to 3K subs. Hopefully we can hit that soon. It, you know, it'd be pretty awesome, and I do appreciate all the support on this channel. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at chrispinell 16 Not a lot of Twitter followers, so maybe if we could boost that up a little bit, that would be pretty cool as well. And without further ado, I say we get right into this slate. So, first off, I should say this should be an interesting and fun game just because of one person. That's Lamar Jackson, the most fun player to watch in football right now. The guy is just a video game on the field. He's like 2004 on. Ma He's like the Madden 04 Michael. Ver I almost said Michael Jackson. Michael Vick. The guy's unstoppable. And the first thing that's going to pop off the page to you is that he is a massive 20,400 as a captain. That's massive. I mean, that's 5K more than the next guy with Mark Ingram. Or, yeah, 5.1K more than Mark Ingram. So that's it's an insane price to pay, but I do think he is worth it. So let's just talk about Lamar Jackson first, but let's talk about him in the flex spot. He's 13600 Still a lot to pay. I believe that's the highest price we've seen for someone on a showdown slate so far. So Lamar Jackson getting all the respect in the world from DraftKings, and deservedly so. He's just on a whole other level for fantasy purposes, purposes this season. Easily the quarterback one. He's averaging 11.6 rushing attempts per game and 80 yards on the ground. Now I want you guys to think about that. He's averaging 80 yards on the ground per game. By just that alone, he's basically starting your starting the game off with two passing touchdowns, a two, a two passing touchdown floor, because obviously 80 rushing yards equals eight points, as does two touchdown passes, because they're you know they're four points each. No other quarterback offers that kind of upside every single week. Or his floor. I mean, Lamar Jackson is just insane. And it's not like he's just a one trick pony as a runner. He can also throw the ball very well. He's definitely improved as a passer this season. He's had multiple games of a perfect passer rating so far this season. Uh, he, had, he has nine touchdowns on the year to only five interceptions. And I know he's had an extremely easy schedule in some of these games and he's performed very well in them. So it's not like he, he's doing what he's supposed to do in these easy games. I mean, he's going absolutely off. But he's also had some good games versus some tough defenses as well. He feasted on. He's, I mean, like I said, he's feasting on teams like Cincy and Miami, where he scored 33 versus uh, Cincinnati, then versus Miami week one. He had 36 points versus Arizona, 33 points. Uh, you know, Kansas City, Cleveland, a little bit tougher matchups. Versus Pittsburgh was his worst game of the year where he scored 14 fantasy points, but they have an excellent defense. But then versus Cincy, 33 points. Seattle, 26. Uh, 28 versus New England. So he has performed well in harder and rougher games before. New England... You know, obviously one of the top defenses in the NFL so far this season, especially against quarterbacks, and he had 28 fantasy points, not too bad, two rushing touchdowns, then 33 versus Cincinnati, then 32 versus Houston more recently. So the guy has been awesome. Now, this is a tough matchup versus the Rams, whose defense has played well recently, although it's been an easier schedule. They played uh, teams like uh, Cincinnati recently, so, and the Bears. You know, Mitch Trubisky's just a disaster. But I don't really care when it comes to Lamar Jackson. We are playing him no matter what, What, despite the price tag that he has. I mean, if you don't want to pay that much for him in the captain spot, I totally understand that. But he has the highest ceiling on this slate. He's got an extremely safe floor. He's been awesome. If you want to play him in the captain spot, no problem at all with that. I'll attempt to put him in the captain spot later, and we'll see if it's possible. I hope it is because he's the best player on this slate. At the very least, put him in your flex spot. I don't see how you fade Lamar Jackson despite his price tag. You're pretty much hoping he gets hurt. And obviously, you can't project someone to get hurt. Lamar Jackson should be fine, especially given the options on this slate. Now, we have Mark Ingram coming in at 10200 So he's the most second most expensive guy in the slate. And it's a big drop off from Lamar Jackson. So he went from 13 some thousand all the way down to 10000 So quite the clip to jump off of. And my first thoughts when I saw Mark Ingram's price, price was that he is way overpriced. And... I personally think he is after digging into it even more. I know he had a good game last week, but this price is very aggressive. And I don't see myself playing him in sync entries. Maybe if you're playing a whole bunch of lineups, I don't. Maybe get a little bit of exposure to him. But if I'm playing one lineup, I don't see how I play Mark Ingram. It just really wouldn't make too much sense for me, especially because I want Lamar Jackson to do all the rushing. I really don't want Mark Ingram to eat into that, even though, I mean, if Mark Ingram has a fine game, it doesn't mean that Lamar Jackson can't have a fine game. We've seen it before, especially like last week. But... The volume really isn't there for Mark Ingram. He's only seeing 13.6 rushing attempts per game, which is not that much. And he only has 1.9 targets per game. And plus, this is a bad matchup. The Rams are third DVA versus the run and are 10th in points allowed to running backs. Not 10th in a good way, 10th in a bad way. So 10th fewest points allowed per game to running backs. And I'm not saying it's likely, but if the Ravens do fall behind for some reason, Ingram is really looking at an outside shot of paying off because he's not a factor in the passing game. I know last week he had four targets, three catches, two touchdowns through the air. 
That's never going to happen on most weeks. I mean, the last time he had, he hasn't even had another receiving touchdown on the season. Not a factor in the passing game. Mark Ingram, I mean, you might get into the end zone, but 10200 that's a tough price for me to pay, especially if I'm prioritizing Lamar Jackson like you guys should. I don't see how he played 10-2 for Mark Ingram. I just don't see it. Volume really isn't there. I don't think he's had over 20 uh, carries in a game so far this season, which he is not usually in the mid-teens. Come close versus Pittsburgh where he saw 19, but Mark Ingram, he is more than likely a pass for me. I just don't see myself paying that much for him. Cooper Cup comes in at 9,800. I'm a big Cooper Cup guy, but and he was a fantasy darling in the, earlier in the year. I was all aboard the hype train. The guy was unstoppable. 11, 20, 36, 29, 29, 5, 11, 38, 8, and 0. And he played that game. That wasn't a bye week or he wasn't hurt. He played that game. He had 0 points. I mean, he was getting elite volume. He was balling out. And it certainly tailed off, especially the past two weeks. He's only had seven targets uh, the past two games. And Goff has looked terrible, which is a direct correlation to Cooper Cup. I mean, versus Pittsburgh, he got goosed. And he had four targets. And, you know, Pittsburgh struggles versus slot receivers. We saw Tyler Boyd have a pretty good game today. Cooper Cup did nothing. It sucked. But, um, yeah, the one thing that may help Cooper Cup in this game is that Brandon Cooks is back, which might not sound great because it's going to take away targets, but... You know, when they were playing together early in the season, it was just fine, and it's gonna help. He's gonna help take the top off the defense, so it should open up some underneath stuff for Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, which is you know that's Cooper Cup's bread and butter, the underneath uh, routes. And we do have a problem though. Baltimore's defense has been great, and Cup does get a rough individual matchup, the worst individual matchup of all the receivers on this team versus Marlon Humphrey, who is Baltimore's top corner, as Cup is in the slot 74% of the time, and Marlon is in the is in the slot 52% of the time. They're also third DBA versus the pass. And honestly, he does feel a bit expensive here. He's not my favorite play in the slate, but I still think Cup's going to be okay. I just don't expect a Cincinnati-type game where he scores 38 fantasy points. I honestly think he's probably more likely in that 10 to 18 point range. Does he have cap- Does he have the upside of getting 20 plus? Yes. It's just a very tough matchup and it's a tough price to pay. But I don't hate him. I mean, he's the best wide receiver on the Rams team. More than likely, you're going to see the most targets, but pretty expensive and it's a really tough matchup versus Marlon so uh, play him at your own risk uh, Mark Andrews at 9200 again he just feels a little bit expensive a lot of these guys feel a little bit expensive Lamar feels a little bit expensive but I'm still playing Lamar because he's just a priority for me but Mark Andrews at 9200 I wish he was a little bit cheaper but he is the best receiving option to pair with Lamar he has the highest target share on the team at 24% and 26% uh, share of the uh, 26% market share of the team's air yards, and he is, E&D is leading the team in touchdowns. The Rams are only giving up 11.9 points per game to tight ends, though, but Andrews is talented, and he's the most likely receiving option to produce here, so if you want to pair Mark Andrews with Lamar Jackson, I think that's totally fine. He's had two really good weeks in a row, four targets, four catches versus Houston, touchdown, 17 fantasy points. And then versus Cincy, eight targets, six catches, two touchdowns, 23 fantasy points. And the guy's had some monster games so far this season, so Mark Andrews, I think he's fine. It's just you know, 9,200, that's a lot to pay for Mark Andrews. Uh, Todd Gurley, he comes in at 8,800. I think he's a pretty good option. It finally feels like we have someone that's not overly expensive here. I could, maybe I always wish he was a little bit less expensive, but I can't get too greedy here. 8,800, I think, is fine. He's coming off a 28 touch game last week, which was obviously the most he's seen all season. And honestly, that's what it should be for the Rams heading in the stretch here, because if I'm Sean McVay, do I trust the ball in Jerry Goff's hand to win games? I sure wouldn't if I was Sean McVay. I also want to play keep away from Lamar Jackson as much as possible and would want to keep it on the ground. And that's just I'm not saying that's what Sean McVay's gonna Sean McVay's gonna do, but that's just what I would personally do, which was is which is what I would hope they would do, because it just makes more sense. The Ravens rush D isn't trash, but they're twenty fifth DBA versus the run, and it's certainly easier to run on these guys than it is to pass on them. So hopefully the Rams decide to just run the ball here for the majority of the time. And plus, he's at a price point that doesn't kill your lineup. So Todd Gurley, I think he's a fine play here. The Rams should look to run the ball early and often here. And hopefully if they find success, they can continue to do so. So Todd Gurley, 8,800. I do like his chances of paying off his salary. Hopefully he gets into the end zone. Had 21 points last week, 25 carries. Just missed the 100-yard mark, but did get into the end zone. Three targets, three catches, 36 yards. Todd Gurley, 8,800. I do think he's one of my top plays of the slate, considering his price tag. Uh, Jared Goff, 8,400. Phew. I'm going to tell you right now, we can play him uh, next week, I think, in cash games versus Arizona. But tonight versus Baltimore, it, I think it's going to be a little rough here. And it's been ugly the past two weeks versus Pittsburgh and Chicago. Two tougher matchups, I get it. But still, man, back-to-back, six-point 
outings. That's awful. He had 25 point uh, back to back weeks versus Atlanta and Cincinnati, which were two good matchups. But this is not one of those matchups. Baltimore is third DVA versus the pass and only giving up 15 points per game to quarterbacks, which is seventh fuse in the league. Also, the guy sucks under pressure and has some of the worst numbers in the league versus pressure, and I can definitely see Baltimore getting up in his face in this matchup. I mean, another team that really could apply the pressure was San Francisco, and he scored two points. So I'm not saying he's going to score two to five points again. I mean, more than likely, he gets you double digits, low double digit points, but I mean, that's certainly possible. He has a single digit game here. I mean, Baltimore is a tough defense. I know he's cheap, but I do think he's an outside option for me and not just a must jam in despite him being a cheaper quarterback on a showdown slate you can play him for sure but i do think the upside's limited there and it would not surprise me if he was below single digits again it's not likely that he's going to do that but him hitting 20 points is i think that's a little less likely than he than he is being in that 10 to 15 point range so jared goff he's an outside option for me hollywood brown comes in at 8k he's okay he's a fun play for sure he definitely has big play upside which can always break a showdown slate wide open if he hits that long touchdown and he was going to leave you in the dark if you fade him. Now, he's not a big volume guy, but he does have a 21% target share and a 29% market share of the team's air yards. And although recently, he's only seen four targets per game. And they should see a decent amount of Jalen Ramsey here, which is a cause for concern. I do like his price, though, and he has upside, but his recent targets aren't too encouraging. But those two of those games, last two games, they were blowouts, so I guess they really wouldn't have to throw the ball too much. But, you know, Lamar Jackson did have good passing, uh, passing outings in those games. But... You know, four targets, four targets, four targets, five targets, not too encouraging. But before that, I mean, seven, nine, 13, five. We'll see. He's capable of the big play. I mean, we saw it versus Miami, although everyone does that versus Miami, but still. He had the 83-yard touchdown. I think he's a fine play. 8K, not someone I'm going absolutely out of my way to lock in my lineups, but he definitely has big play upside, and it would be a cheaper option to pair him with Lamar Jackson than it would be with Mark Andrews. I think Mark Andrews is the safer option, but Hollywood Brown's more of the GPP flyer option. Not flyer because he's it's not like he's cheap, but you know what I mean. GBP option for sure. Uh, Robert one Robert Woods he comes in at seven K. He missed last week randomly last minute with a personal issue, but you know he should be good to go here. And that should. I mean, mentally I don't know if he should be if he's going to be good to go, but you know physically, he's going to be on the field. So that's what's most important here. I have no idea what it was though, so I'm not sure if it's how it's going to affect his play. I can't dig down that deep on a player. But he is 2,800 cheaper than Cooper Cup, and he should see some softer coverage here, so I do think he's okay. I mean, someone's got to move the ball in this offense, and he did have 11 targets versus Pittsburgh the last time he played in 95 yards. So I'm not saying he's going to replicate that, especially with Cooks back, but it was encouraging to see. And he's been a little bit hit or miss this season. My dog's on my lap. He's, I don't know if you guys can see him, but he's trying to get comfy. <laughs> One second. But, uh... Yeah, where was it? Yeah, like I said, he's been a little bit hit or miss this season. We saw him get 16 points versus Pittsburgh, 6 versus Cincinnati, 13 versus Atlanta, 7 versus San Francisco, 9 versus uh, Seattle, 32 versus Tampa, which was a great matchup, 8 versus Cleveland, 6 versus New Orleans, and then week 1, that 13 targets versus Carolina, 16 fantasy points. I think he's fine. He's more of a safer option. I wouldn't say he's got the most upside in the world, but I, you know, I think he's a safe bet for around – Anywhere from like 6 to 12 points with upside of more. So Robert Woods, I do have some slight interest in him. Now Brandon Cooks, he's the cheapest wide receiver of this trio here of the Cooks, uh, Robert Woods, and Cooper Cup trio. And he should see his old teammate lined up across from Marcus Peters for the majority of the time here. Now I'm not a big guy that, I'm not, I'm not a big play Brandon Cooks guy. But he's the cheapest wide receiver of this trio, and he does have big play upside, and he does have a high ceiling. The floor is pretty low here, but I still like the price, and he is capable of big games. Rough matchup versus Baltimore, and Jared Goff might not have time to sit back and throw it deep, which might be a little bit of a concern. But at this price tag, you can hope he breaks one off, and you know, I think he can pay off his price tag here. I mean, he got hurt versus Cincinnati, he got the concussion, but 9 points, 6, 6, 13, 23, 16, 5. Not the most consistent player in the world, but the guy can hit the big play. And he has, you know, he's had games where he's seen a big, um, you know, pretty decently sized target share. Not a big target guy. That's going to be more cup and cups and uh, Robert Woods wheelhouse. But Brandon Cooks can hit the big play. So I don't mind him at 6,600. Obviously, you can't play these quarterbacks. The Ravens defense, I do have interest in them. 5,600, a little pricey, but I do think they're fine here. 
Uh, they're definitely in play, and I know they're on the road, but still, they've been playing very well recently with double digits since week seven. I mean, they have a really nice looking game lock here, 18, 13, 24, 15, and they did play New England one of those games in Houston, which is you know, pretty decent. I shouldn't say New England's a decent offense. They've been looking pretty rough, but going against New England, still had a very good game. And Goff, going against Goff, I do like picking on him in certain matchups, and this is one you can definitely pick on him here. He is prone to mistakes, especially when under pressure and facing good defenses, and that is certainly the case in this one. We've seen him collapse versus San Francisco. We saw it versus Chicago, and then we saw it versus Pittsburgh, and the Ravens defense is right up there with those guys. So I do think Jared Goff, you know, definitely turn the ball over here, get some sacks, and the Ravens defense, 5,600. Might not be the best play in the world for a point-per-dollar standpoint, but if you want to get want to get crazy and plug him into like the captain spot and just hope for a defensive touchdown you could definitely do that definitely possible with Jared Goff but we will see but I do think the Ravens defense is a fine option uh, Gerald Everett at 4,800 not the most exciting play in the world but he did see a season high 12 targets week 11 versus Pittsburgh and then he went down to one target versus Chicago did turn that into 20 yards though so he didn't get he didn't goose you but it was gross out there and that was with Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods out too only saw one target makes no sense I do have a little bit of interest in him, though. The, re the receivers here should have a tough time versus these corners, and Goff is going to be under pressure, having to get the ball out quick, and I do think Everett might be a benefactor here. Uh, Baltimore has been tough versus tight ends this season, allowing nine points per game to them, which is fourth fewest, but he is cheap, and he is capable of big games. The floor isn't really that safe, but he's cheap with some upside here. I mean, 3-14, 3-15, 2-23-15, 3-5-1. Not the, not the greatest four in the world, but we've seen big games from him. And there's some games he has big targets, some games he doesn't. So he's a mixed bag here. But Joe Everett at 4,800. Hopefully he gets into the end zone. Maybe he has one of those games where he gets eight-plus targets and he gets, you know, five-plus catches for over 60 yards and a touchdown. It's in the cards here. Gerald Everett, Rams potentially could be playing from behind here and throwing the ball quite a bit. So I don't mind him at 4,800. Although I do like Gurley, so I do hope they're. I don't hope they're like falling, uh, playing from behind, but it's definitely possible versus Lamar Jackson. They can put up points in a hurry if need be. As for the kickers, I like this slate from a kicker standpoint. I definitely like them both. The two of the best kickers in the game here were Justin Tucker and Greg Zerline. Both defenses are solid, and it wouldn't surprise me if both hit multiple field goals here if drives stall out, and they're both decently cheap here. So yes, kickers are totally viable on this slate. If you do think the Rams move the ball but struggle to score, then great the leg could become a fantastic play. Same with the Ravens. The Ravens, I think, more are more likely to be in scoring position more often, so I guess Justin Tucker probably has a safer floor here. But I do think they're both fine plays to the strongest leg kickers in the league, to the best kickers in the league. Zerline is a little bit cheaper here. Past three weeks, not too great from a fantasy standpoint, but you really can't project kickers. But, you know, these guys are good, so I think both kickers are definitely in play. If you want to go double kicker lineup, totally in play as well. They're both 4k or 3800 so i think they're fine josh reynolds i will have to pass on at 3400 past three weeks have been good six targets five targets eight targets coincidence that brandon cooks was gone in those games so he is back and i'm going to have to kick josh reynolds to the curb because when brandon cooks is playing uh, one target one 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 two two one two no thank you so no josh reynolds for me with my luck now brandon cooks will get hurt and then josh reynolds will come in and he scorched the earth but I don't think that's likely. Uh, Willie, uh, Willie Sneed here at 3,200. At this point, we're getting into a lot of the secondary and tertiary options for this Ravens offense. And really, you just get what you pay for down here. He's averaging three targets per game and 26 yards per game. Gross. Basically, if he doesn't score, you won't be happy. He only has a 12% target share, so you really have to get into the end zone for him to pay off. I believe he did score week one. Yeah, week one, he had 12 points. But if he's not scoring, you're really not that happy. He did score versus Cleveland, too, 14 points. But other than that, it's, I mean, he's going to see targets, just a handful, though, less than a handful, 3,200. Hope he gets into the end zone, and that's really all you can do with Willie Sneed. Same with Nick Boyle. He comes in at 3,000. And honestly, not a bad punt-ish play. He's seeing over three targets per game and 2.3 receptions per game. And he's been okay recently, 4, 11, 13. Not too bad for someone named Nick Boyle. But really, you're hoping for a touchdown here, like all these guys down low. And But he is consistently on the field. It's not like he's barely getting on the field. He's seeing over 70% of the snaps most week. I believe one week he had 84% of the snaps. So Nick Boyle, not the worst play in the world. I will say his headshot's pretty intimidating here. <laughs> it looks pretty scary. But Nick Boyle, more of a blocker, but 
you know, he's seen consistent targets. Not like they're high targets, but it's fine. Hopefully he gets into the end zone, and then you're going to be pretty happy at 3K. Nice for the next guy, the Rams defense. Really don't want to play a defense versus Lamar Jackson and company. They are risky, but personally, you know, I don't want to do it. But if you want some leverage on the field here, you could play the Rams defense. Hope Lamar turns the ball over and they shut down the run. The probability of that is unlikely, though. So they are a very risky play. But you know they've been pretty good for in the in the fantasy points column here. Nine, nineteen, nine, twenty-one, seven. Pretty consistent. So Rams defense not the absolute worst worst play. Do I want to play them? Not really. If you have 2,800 left, you could do it, and hopefully they get a couple of turnovers and sacks, but you're probably playing Lamar Jackson, so it's really not the best correlation play in the world. So uh, you can play the Rams defense at your own risk, but I don't think they're a good play at, by any means. Uh, Gus, Edwards, Gus Edwards comes in at 2,600. I mean, he sees consistent carries, but it's not heavy volume at all. 8, 4, 7, 8, 6, 5, 6, 7, 3, 17. Blowout versus Miami. I kind of have to throw that out the door. But, or window. I think window is the right thing. But, I mean, if something happens to Ingram, obviously he'll be a good play, but I can't project an injury, and he's not going to bust off a 63-yard touchdown every single week. His snaps are typically below 40%, and the only way that Gus Edwards is really going to be a good play is if the Ravens blow these guys out, and I really don't see this being a blowout. I think it's going to be a closer game. I can't really see this game being extremely high scoring because of the defenses are actually pretty solid. But there's always the chance the game blows out, but I just don't think it's likely. It's only a three-point spread here, so Gus Edwards, really not an option for me. And at this point, it's getting... I mean, Malcolm Brown, you got to hope for a goal line touchdown. He did it last week where he had five carries, 15 yards, and a touchdown. Outside of that, you really can't play the guy with any confidence. Miles Boykin... Just really can't do it. It hasn't had a fantasy point since week seven versus Seattle. And that was with some injuries. So Miles Boykin, I'm going to have to pass on. Seth Roberts, he got that touchdown last week. One target, one catch, 15 yards. You need a touchdown from these guys. If they don't score, you are not happy. I know they're cheap, but they're just not being on. They're just not seeing consistent targets and they're not on the field consistently. Tyler Higby, probably going to have to pass on Tyler Higby. I'd rather play uh, Gerald Everett, but. I mean, he's had some okay games before. We've seen it, but I just don't have too much confidence. Tyler Higby, if you have 1,000 left, you want to plug him in. I get it as a pump play, but other than that, you really can't have too much interest in him. Hayden Hurst, he might not be the worst pump play in the world. He actually might be the best pump play. He's only 800, and he's pretty much going to get you two targets. Uh, two targets versus Houston. Two targets, two targets, two targets. One, four, two, five, one, three. Basically getting you about two targets per game, and he scored fantasy points in every single game this season it's not too bad i mean seven seven three five seven one two three four three these aren't great but he's only 800 he does not have to do much and you know he's gonna get some form of fantasy points and if he can turn one of those catches into a touchdown on the goal line 800 yeah you're smashing value and you're gonna be able to fit in lamar jackson pretty easy so hayden hurst not the worst play in the world and really that's about as low as i would ever go on this slate so like I said, I'm going to try to fit in Lamar Jackson at the captain. I just want to see if we can do it. So let's try it. So we're going to plug in Lamar Jackson. And now don't go running this lineup out in all your contests. I have not tried to make a lineup yet, so I'm going to make this up on the fly. But let's try to fit in Todd Gurley. I said I like Lamar Jackson and Todd Gurley quite a bit on this slate. And then at this point, we have 5,200 left. It's not too bad. We could fit someone in like Brandon Cooks or Robert Woods. Uh, let's see. Probably going to get one of the kickers in at one point. But as of right now, let's just roll out someone like Brandon Cooks. We have 4,700 left. We could grab one of the kickers and Justin Tucker or Greg Zerline. As of right now, let's just throw in Justin Tucker. We have 5,100 left. We could plug in Jalen, uh, not Jalen Hurst, uh, Hayden Hurst. I think I was thinking of the quarterback from uh, in college. Hayden Hurst. Hurst at, we have 9,400 left, and we could fit in someone like Mark Andrews, so you can get the pass catcher with Mark Jackson. You got Todd Gurley, Brandon Cooks, Justin Tucker, Hayden Hurst. Not the worst in the world. If you don't want to use Hayden Hurst, we'll see if it's possible. 5,100 left should be possible. So you could play someone like Nick Boyle, Willie Sneed, Greg Zerline. You could go the double kicker route. You could play Gerald Everett. And that would give you, what, 5,400 left and... At that point, you only have 3,800 left. I really don't want to leave that much salary on the table, so that's probably not the most viable option. 
you could play I guess you could play Greg Zerline and then you could fit in the Ravens defense that's not the worst thing in the world so you could just play around with it but Lamar Jackson in the captain spot is definitely doable so I don't really think it's too difficult but it's going to come at the cost of some of these 9k options like like Cooper Cup and Mark Andrews, maybe Todd Gurley, Mark Ingram, which I really want to play Mark Ingram. But anyway, guys, I think your main goal in this slide is to play Lamar Jackson and then build around it. So I'll leave you guys with that. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, remember to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Really helps me out. Really appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at ChrisPanel16. Hope you guys had a good main slate. I ended up going with the Baker and Odell, and that was awesome because, like I always say, I am a big Browns fan, so that was really nice to be double happy because it's always nice when you can play players on your favorite team and they help you win money. So that is always nice. And hopefully you guys played some Landry as well. I personally didn't because I only make one lineup, so I just went with Baker and Odell. But we'll go over that in the recap video tomorrow. So see you guys in the next video, and I am going to get some sleep.